I'm Tina Beth Pina. When you listen to music, you're enjoying the tune. You're not even thinking about the strings that create that musical instrument's intrinsic sound. But believe it or not, before a set of strings even makes it onto a musical instrument, science and math come together to bring music to life. It's a real science behind the engineering of a string. Um, you know, that you take into consideration the, uh, the alloy, its tensile strength, um, you know, its flexibility, how ductile it is, uh, how strong it is. All these things are brought into, a, into essentially a formula that we um, put together and, and, and are able to engineer the right spec for a string for a specific instrument. Uh, we're in control of what we feel is the most uh, sophisticated string manufacturing equipment in the world. John D'Addario III knows a thing or two about creating string manufacturing formulas. His family has been engineering strings since the 17th century. Going back to the 1600s in Salieri, Italy, they were literally sheep herders and they used sheep gut for strings. Uh, and that was preferred nylon materials that became uh, the replacement for most uh, gut strings, and they were more reliable. Today, we use a lot more different uh, varieties of metals. You know, we use um, nickel, use stainless steel, we use tungsten, which is a very dense material, we use titanium, um, all sorts of different alloys um, as well. And also we use some of the latest uh, state-of-the-art synthetic materials. The basic process for making strings is the same as it was 300 years ago. Everything was done completely manually. Today, we have motors, electrical motors, and highly sophisticated computers. D'Addario uses those sophisticated computers and motors, along with raw core wire materials, to create hexagonal and round wires for a variety of stringed instruments in their wire mill factory. First step is to draw it, so we start at a larger diameter and draw it down to the final size and shape that we need. Uh, the second step, because we can't make it straight, we have to put it through a, a two-axis straightener where we take the ring cast out and any side-to-side -side sweep. Uh, and then after that, it's either finished and ready to be wound on or have a tin coating put on it. How do you know you're doing it right? At every step on our drawing machines, we have onboard lasers to monitor diameter. It rotates 360 degrees and traces the shape out so we know we have a good hex shape from there. So now we know we have a, a good cosmetic, the right size, right shape. We'll go uh, and do a tensile test. So basically wrap the wire around these two uh, chucks and pull it to a brake force to make sure that it's strong enough for the string that it's going to be on the instrument. If it's too weak, it'll break. Uh, if it's too strong, it just fatigues quickly. That's kind of the art and science of it, where you want it to be strong but ductile. Mm -hmm. And the trick is to find the right mix. Once the strings are created at the wire mill, they're brought over to the string factory, where the manufacturing process for both fretted and orchestral strings is completed. We have a wide variety of strings that we make. Um, that have different sounds and playing characteristics catered to different types of players. And of course during manufacturing, if you deviate just the slightest bit from the original design target, players will notice and um, they will think it's a defective string. So it's a, it's a huge challenge figuring out how to make strings consistently. Now I know you guys have perfected that consistency. Mm -hmm. How does each string create a different sound? Each string sounds different because of, number one, the material that you use, because different materials sound different. A piece of steel sounds slightly different than a piece of copper. And uh, that's how we manipulate and design the sound of a string, by using different uh, materials. Ironically, music string itself doesn't make very much noise on its own. It's when it's set in motion that sound is created. What actually happens is that if you displace the string, you know, if you push the string to one side, let's say you're in the act of plucking it, you displace the string to one side, there's a restoring force. And that restoring force comes from the tension of the string. And then what happens is that if you pluck the string and you let go of the string, it's pulled back into its original position. That's the, the process of vibration. The D'Addario Company manufactures over 700,000 strings daily and are always looking for new innovations. Their most recent breakthrough is the NYXL string, which uses the same steel wire that's used on the Brooklyn Bridge. When you think, consider the history of the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, it's been there for well over 100 years, uh, and what makes that possible is the strength of the high carbon steel wire. We re-engineered the, the manufacturing process around that wire, which resulted in the highest 
uh, uh, tensile, the strongest uh, high carbon steel wire that, that's ever been used in string manufacturing. That coupled with a new alloy, a uh, new nickel alloy that we use for the round strings on the set has put us into a position where it is the strongest, longest lasting electric string on the market. And not only that, it stays in pitch longer because of its strength. When you have the ability to innovate within the raw material manufacturing process, that just opens the doors to so many different possibilities of innovating your, within your own line of product. Although strings are 45% of D'Addario's business, they also manufacture other musical accessories, like reeds, drumsticks, and drum heads. And they use science and math when producing those as well. For Science and You, I'm Tina Beth Pina.